So due to the success of the first video and the fact that you guys really insisted in part 2, here we go, 20 more tips, tricks and secrets in Photoshop for architecture. And same thing as before, even if you consider yourself an advanced user, I'm pretty sure you'll get some value out of this video. Alright, let's dive straight into the list. First one, let's say you didn't like the art you used in your 3D model and now you've already rendered the image or you rendered just a frame. You can quickly add or replace the art in a frame using the transform tool and the distort option. But to speed things up, you can simply hold Ctrl. That will save you time and as soon as you enter the transform tool, you can start distorting. This tip was sort of mentioned in the last list, but having the layer as a small object and then transforming and distorting will allow you to come back and refine the distortion if needed. That's a really smart way to work non-destructively. Okay, if you used a smart object layer in the last step, and you wanted to replace the art again, because you wanted to test out different compositions, you can now double click on the smart object art layer and go inside it. And paste a new painting here. Now merge them together. And if you save it, you will automatically update on the main file. Oh, and it will work perfectly as long as you have the same aspect ratio, alright? Sometimes, when you're trying to auto-select something that is deep into your layer stack, you may end up selecting some lighting or effects layers that are on top of it. Here I'm using a simpler example, but imagine this file full of layers. To be able to grab the rest of the objects, I usually lock the layer position. I will often do that to all soft and transparent layers, so that it doesn't bother you when working with the other layers but you can still come back here and apply effects and adjust things if needed. It just won't move anymore. Usually I recommend never merging layers, but if you have a lot of layers that are copies of each other and you know for a fact that you won't need to individually work on them, you can do so. Just select all of it and hit Ctrl E to merge the layers. Now, when going for a non-destructive workflow, using the clone stamp tool can ruin your base renders if used incorrectly. So if you need to fix something that demands the clone stamp tool, let's say you didn't like the way this part of the wood looks. Instead of cloning directly on the base layer, create a new layer above the render layer. And that's actually also the next tip. You can use the shortcut Ctrl Shift N to quickly create one. Then use the clone stem tool with the option current and below. That way if you make any mistakes, you still got a clean base render to work with. Creating your own brushes can come in handy in many situations, especially if we're talking about vegetation. For example, I can use this generic PNG forest, go to edit, define brush preset, Usually, try to find something like a bush that has its tops and bottoms sort of leafy. Then, if we randomize this brush by going to Window, Brush Settings and tweaking some of these settings, we can now use this to add many types of vegetation in a render. One use is for example adding grass. If you combine that vegetation brush with a grass field image and a mask, you can place a realistic grass directly in Photoshop in no time. If you have the render elements at your hand, use them to make a quick selection. I know that there are render engines that allow you to quickly create 3D grass, but sometimes they look too 3D-like or require a lot of computer power to manage and render them. So this other method is a quick and reliable way to do it. Now this is actually another tip, X will swap between the foreground and background colors so that you can fix any mistakes quickly. The workflow in these situations is to literally paint more than you should, then hit X and come back refining the edges.
Oh, and let's quickly correct the colors here. This is just too saturated. Now, if you edit the grass as I just showed you, it is important to recreate the shadows. We've got to transpose them to the new grass texture. So, create a new layer on top, hide the grass layer for a moment, and repaint the shadow more or less with the same shape. In Pro Move here, use the same vegetation brush to get an uneven shadow surface. In a Pro Move 2, grab the shadow color from an actual existing shadow in the render. That will help make it blend more nicely. Oh, and don't worry about precision here. Then, unhide the grass layer, and here comes the next tip. We can clip the shadow layer to the grass layer using the shortcut Ctrl Alt G so that the shadow is only visible where there's actually grass, and so that the mask we created earlier does all the work here. All looking good, finish now changing the blend mode to soft light or overlay. And that's actually another tip. I usually like to use soft light or overlay blend modes for shadows. They don't just make it darker, but add contrast and blends in with the hue that already exists in the image shadow. Now maybe the tint I picked was too saturated, Ctrl U and lower it a bit. Oh, we can sometimes not work properly or be too strong still. So also play with the opacity to get the proper shadow strength. And as we are working on destructively, with all these layers set up, we can continue adding shadows to more places and get the final look as we paint. Pretty cool, right? So this image is from the architecture post-production course that we have here at Upstairs. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description in case you're interested in improving your visualization skills. Also, if you're enjoying this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to not miss out on future content. Now, let's go back to the list. Sometimes you might need to add more sky to an image. A quick way to do that is Ctrl Alt C for canvas size. Hit relative, place the anchor on the bottom, and add how many pixels you need more in your image. Now, all you gotta do is just extend and adjust the sky layers. You know how important it is to name layers, right? So that you don't lose yourself when the file gets too big. I would say at least name the most important ones and folders. But then an extra step you can take is color coding the layers and folders, especially folders. Right click on the visibility eye and pick a color. I usually color code only the folder and then the content in that folder will automatically be colored. A pro tip here is to have the same color coding across all of your Photoshop post-production files, so that you know, for example, that violet, purple means people cut out, green for vegetation, blue for the main render, and so on and so forth. You can quickly get around the file at a glance. There's no rule here, create your own coding and stick with it. One way to nail a cutout insertion in a render is to make sure that it's color balanced. For example here, this woman is too warm for the environment she's in. There are obviously shadows and a lot more things to do, but focus on the overall color here. You can use the adjustment layer color balance to tweak a few parameters. Again, there's no rule here, just follow your instinct. Sometimes it needs to be warmer, or it's too green, and so on. Another way to make sure that the cutout color matches the image is to create a new layer on top of the cutout. Color pick with the eyedropper a color in the image, for example this bluish one. Fill the layer above and change the blend mode to color. And finally adjust the opacity to make it look correct. Camera Raw Filter is the way to finish your image. The way I usually work is to compose everything and make the whole image, then I'll treat this as a photograph at the end. Hit Ctrl Alt Shift A to create a copy of everything in a single layer. Then convert this into a smart object so that you add the Camera Raw non-destructively. And go to a Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And here you can do loads of tweaks and corrections.
Awesome, I hope you learned something new today. If so, don't forget to give this video a like and let me know in the comments what was your favorite one. Also, would you be interested in more of these videos, uh, maybe about a specific rendering engine or illustrator? I don't know, let's keep this conversation going in the comment section. See you there. If you made it this far and haven't watched part one, click here to go there.